Hey everyone, welcome back. This time we're gonna be working on the C10 here behind me. Um, this video is gonna consist of the installation of the aftermarket fuel tank and the high pressure fuel pump. So if you guys remember from uh, the previous video that I did kind of going over the entire truck, uh, you might have seen the Boyd's fuel tank that I purchased for it. I've since purchased a fuel pump that goes with it from GM and I'm going to do the install of the tank and get the pump installed as well. So here's what we have. Uh, again, the Boyd's fuel tank made by Boyd Welding. Uh, we've got uh, the MU2101 GM fuel pump. Uh, this thing uh, is basically designed to go in a lot of the newer Camaros. And just in case you guys want the information, that is the part number for the fuel pump as well. So I just want to point out on this, on the fuel pump here, we really don't need the fuel sender on the side. So we can eliminate this, pull this out, and then undo the wires to that part of the uh, sender. Because with this one, I'm going to actually use the sender that comes with the tank. And the reason being is because this sender has full range of adjustment for the height of the tank. So this tank, if you guys notice, is substantially higher than the actual fuel pump. So if I were to use the sender that comes on the fuel pump, you wouldn't have an accurate reading with the tank. So by using the sender that comes with the tank, you actually have a much more accurate reading of what your fuel level is. So we'll be using this sender for the uh, fuel gauge. And basically we're just gonna be using two wires on the module here, wiring it into a pigtail uh, that just runs the fuel pump. All you need is a power and ground off that. So gonna get that thing uh, mounted here in the fuel tank. And I will show you guys a picture of that once it's mounted. It's a pretty simple, set up and then following that we'll uh, go over the installation of the tank inside the truck or i should say in between the frame rails and i'll kind of go over the uh, process of how this tank particular tank is mounted and we'll go from there so i kind of also wanted to point out one reason for doing this type of setup um there's a few reasons for it. So the factory setup, obviously the tank is behind the seat and there's really nothing wrong with that. I've had trucks in the past where the tanks are there. Um, the main thing though is that tank is designed for low pressure and carbureted vehicles. Um, this tank setup is designed for high pressure with the fuel injected motor. So for what I'm doing, it actually works out a lot better don't have to modify the original tank to accept a uh, high pressure pump. This thing is just kind of all simplified. The other advantage is for those of you that may have had an older truck that had the fuel tank inside the cab, if it's not perfectly sealed up, you may notice a uh, gas smell. So that's another reason. Definitely won't have the problem of having any fuel vapors or fuel smells inside the cab. So there's another reason to move the tank. And the third reason, uh, which I like as well, it's more of a performance standpoint, and that's it puts the weight of the fuel tank in the very rear of the truck and gets you a better weight distribution. So there's three good reasons why you might want to relocate to a different fuel tank to the back of the truck. Um, I think all three reasons are good. Any one of them would be a reason to do it. So anyway, I should also probably mention how to take the fuel sender out of the fuel pump just for those that may want to know. It's pretty simple. Two plugs here, just press this release button and pigtail pops out. And then you have this inner tab right here and this inner tab right here. You just push down on those two and the whole assembly will slide out. And there you have it. So there's a fuel sender. You can just do whatever you want with that one. But uh, again, now this is ready to put in the tank. Like I said, you don't need the fuel sender on this. It's in the tank and here we go. I would like to say that this is my first time using a fuel tank from this particular manufacturer. And I'd like to say at this point, I have nothing but good things to say about them. 
I'm very impressed with the overall build quality of it. The price was a little bit spendy. Um, I believe I paid a little over $700 for the tank and the fuel pump itself was under a little under $300. So we'll put the total cost of the, you know, fuel delivery system at around a thousand dollars. Um, yeah, it's a little spendy, um, but I'm really impressed so far with it. Um, I just wanted to point out, here's kind of a close up inside. This thing is baffled. So that is a very good thing. And just the welding and machine quality is awesome. So as you can see, this thing is designed to fully fit the pump, I mean, you don't have to worry about which direction to put it in. It only drops in one way. It's designed to go in one way. The flange is extra thick. And then of course it uses the regular GM fuel pump O-ring. So if you buy the fuel pump, you get the pump, comes with the O-ring, and then you can just drop it in the tank. And it's a simple install. Again, very impressed by the weld and the build quality of this. So I gotta say, I do really recommend them, but Basically, just have to put the O-ring on, drop the fuel pump down in there, clock it correctly so it's keyed right there. Take your flange, put your flange on there, and then grab all your screws and bolt it all together. Pretty simple. There you go, bolted down and installed. Then there's this cover right here, which is everything. And it still allows room for your uh, fuel line and also your uh, wire harness to come through there as well. Just have to get a GM connector for the fuel pump there and then run a fuel line 3 8 inch from there to the engine. I will also do an inline fuel filter as well. On this particular pump, the fuel pressure regulator is built in, so you should need to run a fuel pressure regulator, just a straight fuel line if you wanna run a fuel filter in there as well. Usually these type of pumps have a built-in fuel filter, but I would highly recommend that you guys run an inline fuel filter, just a little extra protection. So I like to do that with everything. It's up to you if you wanna do it as well. So next step will be getting the marks lined up on this to uh, drill it for the mounts and get it in the frame. And then the next step we have here is to decide where you want the mounts to be in your frame. So these are the backing mounts for the tank that go on the top side of the frame. You basically have these on the frame and then you have the frame rail that sits right here and then your tank is below that. And these are threaded. They're a mounting kit that you can buy with this particular tank and you need to determine where you want to mount it. On this, what I've done is I set the tank up in the frame and this inner line is where the frame rail sits. And I decided I wanted to mount this about a quarter inch in. So this line is where I'd marked for where this is going to actually sit on top of the frame. And then I have taken and center punched the holes that I need to drill through this. And then from there, we'll use this as a template, set it up against the frame rail and then drill the holes in the frame. And what I like to use for doing my punches is I have an automatic punch here. And why I like this is because you can actually set the punch wherever you want it. And all you have to do is push down and it automatically hits hard enough to put a mark in your metal, whether it be aluminum or steel. So if you guys want a nice punch, I think these are between 20 and $30. It's called an automatic punch. I highly recommend these. And so now I'm gonna drill the holes out. There's three per side, and then I'll get this tank mounted up on the frame and make the marks on the frame to where I need to drill the frame out. In the next step, got the fuel tank Lift it up with the floor jack in position where it's gonna sit in between the frame rails. And I've gone by my previous marks where I've marked the center where the tank sits in between the rails. So you have equal distance in between the tank and the frame on both sides and then gapped front and rear. From here, I'm gonna drill the three holes 
on each side of the frame. Basically, I'm gonna take my center punch that I showed you guys, and I'm gonna center punch three holes on each side, drop the tank back down, and then drill those holes out. Then I'm gonna put the tank back up in place, and you're gonna have the tank. The tank comes with a thin layer of rubber uh, as an isolator pad between here and the frame. So you have the tank, rubber pad, frame, and then these plates will go on top of the frame, and these are what your bolts will thread into. So I'm gonna get these center punched, marked, and drilled, and then I'll come back and get this tank all mounted up. Fast forward an hour or so, holes are drilled, tank is mounted. And the order of installation on here should be a bolt, lock washer, flat washer. You have the tank mounting flange. There is this rubber isolator, then your frame. And then on top of that, which you can't see, is that back mounting plate that uh, is threaded. So not really a difficult install. It does take a little bit of time. But overall, happy with it. And it looks good. It'll look a lot better when the bumper is on here. So it will cover most of that. You will have a little bit that you can see hanging below the back of the truck instead of seeing a rear differential back there. I'd also like to point out this uh, part that I used too. That's a 617. I know that's kind of faded. But these are the AN fittings that I use for the quick connects on the fuel pump and the fuel rail for the fuel lines I build, uh, that is 3 8 inch, and that's what I use to uh, build the stainless hoses when I do a fuel system. And there you have it. There's the installation of the fuel tank and the high pressure fuel pump in the 72C10. Um, I figured I would show you guys the install video for those that might be interested in the how-tos or maybe you guys are looking for uh, products or ideas. So. I figured I might as well show it. So hope you guys enjoyed it and there'll be more to come soon on the C10. So until then, thanks again for watching. We'll see you later.